Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cube's ongoing coverage of SuperCloud 5, the battle for AI supremacy. I will never tire of saying that. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. We've got two great guests for this segment. We've got Elena Zakova. She is the VP of Partnerships at Ivan, and Jonathan De Jong. He is the SVP of Engineering at Globo. Thank you so both so much for joining us. Of course, happy to be here. So I want to start, I think, great. I want to start with you, Elena. Can you tell us a little bit more about your role at Ivan and, and sort of how you help customers achieve their business goals? Right. Um, so Ivan is an open source data platform for everyone, trusted open source data platform. And I think we'll talk more about open source, about, you know, the pros and cons, but uh, we are 100% open source company and we brought it on a single platform to make it easy for our customers to really achieve that, that time to value. Um, what I do is I'm, I'm running our global partnerships. So I work with, with partners around the globe, um, which essentially helps us to reach more customers like Globo uh, with the solutions that we have built. Okay, now Jonathan, tell us more a little bit about Globo. It's a B2B provider of translation technology and services. What? Tell us a little bit more about the company and then also what your role there is. Sure, so Globo is a language services company. It's a fancy way for saying we help people communicate when they don't speak the same language. Our primary uh, use case that we work in is healthcare. So most times we're helping a patient communicate with their, their care provider. And because of that, we like to think ourselves more as a patient communication company because we're helping that patient communicate throughout the entire life cycle of their healthcare journey from the start when they're you know, scheduling their appointment to when they're going home to you know, complete their care for themselves after they've been released from the hospital. So we like to join that entire care continuum, but we also do work in other industries as well. But that's, that's one that we focus a lot on. Um, my role at Globo is, is essentially leading our technology, so building our, our platforms, uh, working with our, our data science teams and um, you know engineering ops teams to ensure that our our systems are up twenty four seven for our clients. So how do you work together with Ivan and and and, and achieve these goals? How, what does your data infrastructure look like today? Well, our data infrastructure is is mostly running on top of Ivan. Um, we moved our primary Postgres databases over to Ivan about uh, two and a half three years ago at this point. And um, you know they they allow us to um, run in multiple different regions, multiple different availability zones throughout. Um, currently on Amazon Web Services, as well as back up our our data to another cloud provider um, as required um, of our different use cases. So they've made it really simple to orchestrate how our our databases run and operate. Um, and we've also um, set up some additional uh, services outside of, of Postgres with them and are continuing to expand how we can use their platform to really run in the highest availability mode possible. Okay, so both Ivan and Globo have grown incre incredibly fast in the last few years. What are your main priorities, Jonathan, as SVP of engineering? I mean, I think I think I have a couple different goals. One is as our platform scales, obviously we need to support that scale. So finding partners like Ivan who can help us do that seamlessly. That's that's definitely one of them. Second one is really AI. Um, we have doubled down on AI. We've decided that you know we want to be the AI leader in our industry and are doing everything on our power to to do that. And it's not just about you know replacing our workforce with AI, which some people have tried to do in their industries. We really wanna augment what our teams are doing to make them better. How do we make each of our interpreters and translators better at what they're doing? How do we find workflows that don't need an interpreter that we can introduce AI to make it better? How can we do all these different things using these new technologies as they evolve where they make sense? And that's the really important part because it, in, at least in the medical world, some of them don't make sense yet. The technology is just not there yet. The models are just not there yet. So how do we help bring about that change to find those use, those workflows that we can support today or can continue to work with um, you know, AI partners to evolve their technology to get to a place where it can actually solve our problems? 
So Elena, I want to bring it back to you. Um, just hearing Jonathan talk about how the company is using AI, not necessarily to replace workers, but to enhance the products and services and also help those workers do their jobs more effectively, more productively, and, and probably have more satisfaction too. Can you talk a little bit about some of the recent developments on the Ivan platform and how you're helping customers achieve better outcomes? Yes, absolutely. I think Jonathan just said it really well that what they focus on is solving the problems for their customers and for patients, essentially the users. So how we see our role is really being the backbone for our customers, that we enable them to focus what they do best, delivering value to their customers, while you know we are taking care of all the plumbing, if you wish, and making sure that it's available, it's, um, it's scaling right, and it's also helping them to manage their costs. So we, if we talk about recent developments on the platform, we currently have 11 open source uh, technologies available on the platform, and two latest editions have been Flink, which, you know, where it seamlessly is integrated in our case with Kafka, so it allows you to process millions of events per minute. And um, then another edition, which I think, Jonathan, will be interesting to you is the ClickHouse, um, because that's super powerful tool when we talk about AI um, and, and the, the big amounts of data. So it's an analytical database that, that can handle things extremely fast and extremely large volumes of data, um, while helping you to, again, manage that cost. Um, one example is, Jonathan, you, you mentioned that you are using Postgres and then you, you're looking for ways, how will it scale, obviously, as you grow. Uh, one of the customers we had actually was struggling with the storage. So they were using Postgres and it was like 1.2 terabytes of data and they were growing really, really fast. So that was a hydro growth company. So they actually moved to ClickHouse and the storage was cut in more than twice. So it's it's below below 500 gigs now. And that's, as you can imagine, a huge, uh, a huge saving right there. Another development on the platform, which we're still working on, but but really going to be available is the tiered storage in Kafka. So if you want to get access to some of your older data, you might, might want to keep that data in, um, in a different kind of cheaper tier of storage. So that becomes possible with that feature. Okay. Okay. So when it comes to building different products and services, you're both working with different providers and different partners. And to, to quote you, Jonathan, from the beginning of our conversation, not everyone is always speaking the same language. Um, I'd love to hear how you work with these different technology partners and how they play a growth, uh, how they play a role in your growth journey. Um, Jonathan, I'll start with you, but I'd also like to hear from you on this, Elena. Jonathan. Well, I think there's a lot of opportunity out there because each one has a different perspective. I mean, just like we can talk about all the different LLMs that exist in the world, each one has a different perspective on how it responds to a request. So I think that's what I've always tried to do. I think that's what we've tried to do as a team at Globo is find partners who can help make us better. So whether it's Ivan, whether it's Amazon, whoever it might be, trying to find partners who think like us, who are trying to solve problems like us, who aren't just approaching it as here's the one solution, here's a set of solutions or a couple different ways you can solve the problem, because that will often be the most effective. Um, I always like to say we collect databases at Globo. We have a number, a lot of different databases we work with. And the reason is because no one database can do everything. And I think that's the, the best analogy I can give from a, from a technical perspective is, you know, we use Redis for real-time key storage. We also use Redis for caching. But we use, you know, a Redshift for um, data warehousing. We use Postgres for our operation database. We use other databases for other things. And I think that's really what we look for is finding things that fit the solution we're trying to, to actually achieve, not just go out and, you know, every, everything is, is, you know, to a hammer, everything's a nail, right? I love that, love that quote because it, it can happen in tech so often that, that you just turn everything into nails when you really need to look at kind of the finesse of, of a partnership, the finesse of, of the solution you're trying to implement. So we work with a lot of different people for that very reason. Um, and, and Ivan's been a great part of that, that story for us. Elena, how about you? I'd love to hear from your perspective. 
innovation is is sort of what needs to happen in every organization today. And, and companies have different approaches to how they bring out the best in their teams and how they collaborate. How What do you look for in your partners and how do you then work together to make sure that you do have a cohesive approach, but you're all bringing your, your best creativity and ingenuity to bear? I think that the answer to that to that is really in, in understanding the customer. So for me, what Jonathan just said, he, he's approached by, you know, hundreds of companies. So it's a lot of noise and it's a lot of different messages and everyone claims to be the best. So when I define our partnership strategy and where do we want to be having that better together story, I always say that I put customer in the center and then I map out who are these customers interacting with? Obviously, the hyperscalers and their native solution portfolio. So how do I integrate with that to make it better experience, smooth integration for the customer? Obviously, the other technology partners, other ISV companies, how do I partner with them? And which of them do I partner with so that it always mapped back to what customer is using together with Ivan platform or next to adjacent solutions to Ivan um, so that you know it's easy for the customer. So that's really the definition of, of who do we want to engage with so that it brings most value to the customer and decreases that noise so that that you know it's not confusing what to choose while you have the options clearly clearly mapped out there. Okay. Okay. So I want to talk more about AI because it has been the the buzzword, the buzz buzz technology of 2023, and that does it shows no signs of slowing down. Jonathan, I know that Globo intends to become the most AI enabled service provider in in your industry. Can you talk a little bit about about what those aims really mean and how you approach that from a technical perspective and the work that you and your team are are doing to make that happen? I mean, I, th I think it means that any part of our business that we can enable AI, we want to. Um, that goes from, you know, anything in our, our like line of business offering, like how we operate our business, all the way through our service offering that we provide to our clients. Um, so Global HQ is our, our platform that we provide to all of our clients. It allows them to access and manage their, their services. Um, that includes reporting and, and all sorts of other information that we can give them and trends that are happening in their, their uh, you know, health system. And I think that anywhere we can enable AI there in that that capability is something we're going to want to do. We're also, there's some stuff I can basically can't talk about, but there's a lot of stuff we're going to do around how we deliver our service, how we actually um, look at our interpreters and how we make them better. Um, but, you know, that that's going to hopefully revolutionize our industry um, in how, especially how quality is assessed, because today okay. there's really no good quality standard that um, is, is, you know, across how, how good a linguist is, right? There's, there's certifications that linguists can become certified. However, those certifications only cover a couple languages. And once you get outside those languages, it, it kind of becomes a mess of, of what's, what's the standard that we, we evaluate against. So how do, we, how do we come to a common standard of quality and how can we use AI to help that? So that's, that's some of the stuff we're, we're looking at, but basically anywhere in our business that we find can AI can be used we plan on implementing it. Elena, do you have customers that are building AI-based solutions? And, and if so, how does Ivan's offering support them in their missions to do that? Yeah, yeah, we, we do. And I think one of the key things now, Jonathan said about the quality of data, and, and when I engage with our AI customers or with some of the partners in that space, because we're also looking to build partnerships with AI, uh, companies. Very often we discuss that, you know, building LLM or educating and training a machine is to a certain extent only as good as the data that you put in it or make available for it. And that's where we come in. I'm kind of saying that focus on the algorithms or do what you do best because you know your business and you know your use case. But let me cover what I know best, which is that data, because it's not only availability of data, but it's its relevance. It's the format it comes from, security, compliance, you know, especially depending on the, if we talk about healthcare, you, you definitely want to make sure that you're compliant end to end and the data that is available is, is in, the, in the right format and right shape and, you know, secure, essentially. So, so these are the discussions we have with most of, of the customers who are in AI, 
And then, of course, there are some, well, technical features within the portfolio, like Vector PG, again, talking about ClickHouse and how great combination it is with Fling to do that fast moving large data volumes. Those are brilliant. Same as open search. So that messaging bus that is very often at the center of LLM, typically Kafka is, is of, often used there, but then you are extending it to open search, which is again, another solution on our platform. So both of you, we're both getting, we're getting ready to pit a pin in 2023. I'd love to hear both of you just talk a little bit about more what you're expecting to see out of next year. I know, Jonathan, you said there's some, some things going on you can't quite talk about yet, but uh, what, what's most exciting to you, shall I ask? I'll start with you, Jonathan, about what, what you're most excited about in terms of the innovations and projects that you're working on at Globo. I'm, I'm really excited, not just but what we're working on to see what happens in the AI world, right? You're you're seeing this great kind of AI race where you have OpenAI, you have Amazon, you have Google, you have you know Anthropic, you have all these different companies that are working on creating the best LLM out there to solve every problem. And going back to, to what Elena was just saying about data, really all we've seen in the last maybe 18 months is a slick interface and a great amount of data that's been collected to give us a really, really exceptional LLM. The technology and the algorithms that you're seeing have been around for years. This is this is not really new to anyone who's worked in AI. What we're seeing is just the amazing data that it can sort through very, very quickly and come back with responses. So I think what we're going to see is how do we drive down cost in, in using use of AI? How do we um, you know continue to build in protected manners? You, you talked a minute ago about um, data and you know, especially in healthcare, how regulated data is really important. How do we you know ensure that we're protecting people's data? So how do we create off-walled versions of LLMs that can run on a individual's data and not be exposed, especially on the training side, back to the, the parent company? So I think there's going to see a lot of things that are going to happen in the AI space to make it more acceptable and more deployed. Um, and I think that's going to enable people like us to use it more, to drive deeper into our use cases. Um, I, I just think I just see a lot of a lot of changes that are going to evolve in this in this industry over the next again the next eighteen months and it's just really exciting. It's going to enable us to do so much more. Really exciting times, Elena. Um, well, exactly. It remains to be seen. I think there will be a lot of um, fast moving projects in this space, and then I think at some point we will be more and more of us will be stopping and thinking. Wait a minute. Let's think about it for a second. So, what is actually going on? How reliable it is? Um, I love there is one example where, you know, AI was used in, in one of the courts. Um, and then when um, mm -hmm. when judge was asking, like, what is this reference case? I, I'm not sure I can find it. And then I was like, yeah, I made it up myself. So I think there will be a lot of this stop, uh, you know, slow down before you speed up. Um, what I'm excited about for next year is actually some of the AI powered capabilities coming to our platform. And I really want to see what that brings to our customers that are using the services on the platform. Excellent. Well, Jonathan, Elena, thank you both so much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And I hope you will stay tuned for more of theCUBE's coverage of SuperCloud 5. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. You're watching theCUBE, your leader in enterprise technology coverage.